Hey guys, welcome to my kitchen. Another big exciting day in my kitchen. Where are we going? What are we making? I'm thinking we're gonna go to South East Italy, Puglia region, right? And we're gonna make some Italian comfort food. Doesn't that sound great? And one dish that just screams Italian comfort food is risotto. So today what we're gonna make is risotto with tomatoes. And it's a classic dish uh, in southern Italy during that fall, during that autumn time, uh, because uh, you know, you're walking the countryside, right? And it's a little cool, it's a little damp, maybe sunny day. You walk inside, you're hungry, you want something to warm your bones, fill your belly, and make you feel really good, make you feel comfortable. And this dish screams that. So today we're gonna make risotto with tomatoes, or in Italiano, risotto alla pomodoro. And it's simple and it's easy. A lot of times people are uh, intimidated to make a risotto and you shouldn't be. And I'm gonna walk you through it and make it simple. A couple of key ingredients here, you gotta get the Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, Jerry Vale playing. You need a little wine. It's nice to have a few family members in the kitchen because you know it's a little bit time consuming. You're gonna add things slowly, stock slowly to the rice. And it's fun to have some company in the kitchen while you're filling the kitchen with the aroma of fall and autumn and, and a delicious recipe. All right, so let's go over ingredients. Let's have some fun. First and foremost, you're gonna need some rice. Now you want a rice that's really high in starch. One of the more popular rices used for risotto is arborio rice. So we want in this dish one and a half cups of arborio rice. Next, you're gonna need some stock, if you will. So in this case, we're gonna use four cups of water, and then you're gonna want some tomato paste. So in this case, I have two tablespoons of a good quality tomato paste. We're gonna need some butter. So you're gonna need six tablespoons of butter. I did three tablespoons because I'm gonna add three in the beginning and then I put three in another dish. I'm gonna add three tablespoons at the end. Next guys, you're gonna need to add some cheese. So traditionally, risotto always has Parmesan cheese or Parmigiano Reggiano. So in this case, I've got Parmigiano Reggiano. Oh. The aroma, that is the king of cheeses. See the old rind there? Oh, that looks so good. So we're gonna add about a cup of Parmesan cheese. And then, in this dish, we wanna kick it up a little bit. So we're gonna use some sheep's milk uh, in this case, and that's gonna be a Pecorino Romano cheese. And with the Pecorino, it's a little saltier. It's got a little bit more of a bite, a little bit more of like a sharpened bite to it. And we're gonna add a half of a cup of Pecorino Romano, grated. All right, next we're gonna add the main ingredient, right? The, the name on the marquee, right? The big guy. So we're gonna add some tomatoes. So I always like to add a mix of tomatoes. So depending on what you've got in the garden or what's at the farmer's market or, or what you're gonna be able to pick up at the, at the grocery store. So I've got some smaller cherry tomatoes, right? And in this case, like I said, there's no right or wrong. You can pick up different colors, whatever you want. So I'm gonna use probably about two two and a half large tomatoes and a little bit of the small tomato. We're gonna want one whole golden onion, if you will, like a Spanish onion. That's great, that's gonna give it that, that really strong, earthy flavor. We're gonna want some garlic. Oh, garlic is, is just the smell. The aroma of that is just screams Italy to me. It screams my mother's kitchen. Onions and garlic, you know, you walk in and it just fills the kitchen with such a delicious aroma. So in this case, we're gonna go about two cloves, maybe three depending on the size, but two medium-sized cloves of garlic. We're gonna need some salt, we're gonna need some pepper. So I always tell you to go with fresh ground pepper. Anytime you grind something, it's gonna dry it out quickly and you're gonna lose those oils, which is the flavor. So I always go with fresh ground. I've got some salt here. So in this case today, we're gonna use pink Himalayan, earthy briny. It's sexy, pink is sexy, let's be honest. We're gonna go with some wine. Now today what I have, left over from uh, the prior evening is a little Riesling. There's no right or wrong here in the wine choice. The Riesling, we're gonna have that for lunch today as well. We're gonna need some olive oil. Now we want something that's extra virgin. It's an Italian dish. So ideally you want something from Italy, you want some high quality, robust if you will, earthy, grassy, little bit of, <laughs> a little bit of cough, a little pepper in the background, right? So where would I go? I know where I would go. So listen guys, anyone new to our channel, uh, I own a farm in Italy. I named the farm uh, and the oil after my two boys, Vito and Joe. 
and it's right in Puglia, Italy, just above the heel, and uh, we co-op with a whole group of farms in that whole region to bring you some of the best quality extra virgin Italian olive oil you're ever going to have. And I know your next question, oh my god, I want to buy some, where do I get it? So just hit the link above or below, go to the website, uh, Cooking Italian Joe, go to the Facebook page, click buy it now, and you can grab yourself a bottle or a few bottles, and we'll drop ship it right to your house. And you know, when I look at that, I always think of of traveling to Italy. So I think of it as a, as a trip to Italy right in a bottle. Ingredients are done. Let's start cooking. What are you going to need? I'm going to need a large saucepan here because I'm going to need to warm up my stock. And I'm going to need a large saute pan because that's what I'm going to slowly cook my risotto in. First thing I got to get going on is my onion. So let me grab my whole onion. Easiest way to do this, guys, take your onion, go from top to bottom, cut it right in half. And why I want that is I want the bottom of the onion on each piece, okay? Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut the little top off and then with it cut in half and the top off it's really easy to peel. Now with both onions halved I'm just going to take one of the onions and I'm going to cut it into slices but keep the bottom intact. And then all you're going to do is just come across to the side. Beautiful guys, the onions are done. I'm going to slide those off to the side. Now I've got my garlic. I said two cloves but one of these is kind of small and I was like a little extra garlic so I'm going to hit I'm going to hit these hard, give them a quick peel. And with my garlic, I'm going to add a garlic press when I'm ready to add that. So let's go over to the stove. So now we want to saute the onions and the garlic. So I've got the pan on a low heat. I'm going to start off with some Vito and Joe's olive oil. And I'm going to add maybe three, four tablespoons of olive oil. Next, I'm going to add all my onions. And give it a stir so that the onions are fully coated with your olive oil. We're looking for the onions to be translucent and soft. Once I get the onions almost translucent, then I'm going to add my garlic. I don't want to add my garlic too early because the garlic will cook faster than the onions and I don't want to burn the garlic. Now while I'm sweating the onions, I'm going to take my four cups of water in my saucepan. I want to heat it a low medium and now I'm going to take my two tablespoons of tomato paste and I'm going to add that to my water. So essentially what I'm making is a stock that has a nice robust tomato flavor to it. I'm gonna use a ladle to stir this because I'm gonna need a ladle to mix it inside the risotto. So I'm gonna give it a nice light stir. And our goal here is to get this right up to a really light bubble, just, just at the verge of a boil. Now I'm gonna grab a couple of tomatoes. What I'm looking for here is maybe about two cups on the heavy of diced tomatoes. And guys, don't worry about the liquid or the water or anything from the tomato because we want that. Perfect. So I'm looking for all the tomato pieces to be right around that size. And now I'm just going to take what I've got diced up. I'm going to put it in my container. And you do want the sauce. So see that liquid there? You want as much of that as you can get. Guys, now I've got two cups on the heavy. Boy, doesn't that look just gorgeous? Of diced tomatoes. Now my onions are just starting to get translucent. They're almost where I want them. So now I'm going to take the garlic that I put through the garlic press. That right there is vampire repellent. I'm just going to tell you. I mean, there's some good aroma in there, but woo! Now I'm going to give that a nice stir. Our tomato stock is bubbling, so I'm going to turn the heat way down on that because I don't want to boil off the water. That needs to be really hot before I add it to the rice. Now when I'm almost done, guys, I'm going to add my first three tablespoons of butter. I'm going to add a little bit of salt. In this case, probably about a quarter of a teaspoon, and then I'm going to taste it as I go through making the dish. You got to remember your Parmesan cheese and your Pecorino Romano, they have salt in it. And now I'm going to add some fresh ground pepper. In this case, I'm going to add a good half of a teaspoon. Now, guys, comes a very important part of making a risotto, and that is we want to toast the rice. So while the onions and garlic are done with the oil and the butter and our seasoning, we're going to add the rice to it. And we want to do maybe two minutes, three minutes of heat to the rice. And what that's going to do is that's going to open the rice. It, it actually, like popcorn, think of popcorn, how it, how it pops the corn and makes it very porous. Rice isn't going to pop to that degree, but it's going to open up the fibers of the rice. And that allows the starches to be released and it allows the liquid to enter and hydrate the rice. So it's a very important part of the process. So I've got my one and a half cups of arboreal rice. You just add the whole thing. And what you're going to do now is you're going to coat the rice with all the oil and the butter. And you're going to just spread it out as evenly as you can. And in about a minute, 
you're gonna start to hear the rice crackle. So once you start to hear it crackle, give it a stir. Spread it out one more time, we're gonna let it go just another minute. So in total, we're probably looking about three minutes, maybe four minutes to what we call toast the rice. Okay, our rice is toasted. Now I'm gonna go ahead and add our wine. We're only gonna add about a half of a cup. Now why do we add the wine? One, oh, hear that? The aroma of that is just fantastic. So the wine does a few things. One, yes, it's gonna add flavor. Two, it's gonna add liquid which is gonna start the process. You see how the, see how the starches are coming out of the rice immediately? See how it's starting to get kind of cloudy? That's a good sign. That means the rice is good and the toasting of the rice was great. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. What you're also gonna get with, with a little bit of the alcohol, which will burn off, so there's no alcohol content in the dish, but what happens is the alcohol acts as a solvent, so it allows certain flavors from the onion, the garlic, and the rice to be extracted that normally wouldn't be. So I'm gonna keep this going until the liquid from the wine is gone. You see how it's almost gone? It's creamy. See how it leaves a streak? But it, now it's starting to dry up just a bit. Right now at this point, I'm gonna add my diced tomato. So I'm gonna add all two cups and now I wanna get this hot. So don't worry about the liquid because there's a lot of liquid, a lot of water in the tomatoes and they're gonna start releasing it as they cook down. And guys, at this point now, I wanna keep the heat on. I wanna cook it down until the tomatoes become really soft and tender. And the liquid from the tomatoes now is starting to dry up. You see that? I don't really have any liquid when I drag the spoon across the bottom. Now I wanna start adding my stock. Couple of things, I want my stock hot almost on a boil as I add it. Number two, I wanna add it nice and slow. Number three, the sound of Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin, or Jerry Vale greatly helps how this dish comes out. <laughs> Couple other important tips that make this come out absolutely delicious. Tell you what, you hit that red square button and the bell, notification bell, you subscribe to the channel. And any trips, recipes, any info on my blog and with Boreal, come right to your notification box. And I'll tell you what, really means a lot to me when you subscribe to the channel. And hey, makes you part of the cooking and telling with your family. You know what I mean? Secondly, olive oil, right there. Did you order it? Yeah, oh, I can hear it. I can literally hear it being drop shipped to your house. We're all set. All right, so let's start adding our stock. Guys, the key here is just take your time. So take a couple of ladles. So that's a little over a cup each time. So I'm gonna add about two cups and then I'm gonna really slowly mix it. Anything on the bottom, make sure you're cleaning the bottom well. You're gonna start to see how creamy everything gets and the starches are being released from the rice. So the next question, guys, is how do you know when to add the next ladle? You see when I push back on it, it doesn't have any loose liquid, that's when you know. And it doesn't have to be exact, so I'm gonna add another two ladles, and I'm gonna just keep adding the stock until I don't have any stock left. We're looking for an al dente finish to the rice. We want to the tooth, as they say. We want a little bit of a bite, and we're ready to go. Now, how do you know when you're done? One, I'm gonna pull back, it looks relatively dry. Secondly, see how it's not so soupy? When I pull back, it actually starts to hold itself. It starts to create like its own body. And that's when you know you're ready to go. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shut the heat off. First thing I wanna do is add my last three tablespoons of butter. That's gonna give me just a little extra liquid before I add my cheese. Now remember, this is still hot, so this is still cooking. And now I'm gonna add my cheeses. An important tip I wanna give you guys, we want the cheese to fully dissolve in the risotto. So what I do is I use a microplaner and it just creates such a fine shred of cheese that it immediately, if you will, emulsifies, it immediately dissolves in anything warm. Now I'm gonna add my half of a cup of shredded Pecorino Romano, and then my last is gonna be my one cup Parmigiano Reggiano. And I'm gonna just gently stir it, almost fold it at this point. And now guys, I've got a beautiful Mackenzie Child serving dish, and I've got just a little bit of basil right here that I chopped up just to give it a nice little finish. I'm gonna take my Parmesan cheese. Guys, always my favorite time, my taste time. What's really important in Italy, they want you to flatten it out. I'm gonna finish it with a little bit of basil and then a little bit of the fresh Parmesan. All right, here we go. Cooking in town with Joe, taste of vision, smell of vision. The aroma, you know, it's butter, it's cheese. You get the tomato, the pomodoro right at the end. Mm, the onion, the garlic. Little bit of the wine, immediately it's the butter and the cheese. And then your mouth, your taste buds just explode with that tomato, but it's cooked down, so it's it's like a gentle, deep broth of tomato flavor. Mm, the rice is absolutely perfect. It's that al dente. You know, it's still got body to it, it's got a little bite to it. The onion, the garlic, little bit of the wine, and it's creamy and delicious. 
the ultimate of Italian comfort food, no doubt. Guys, thanks so much for joining me in my kitchen for a fantastic recipe. Remember to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell, right? Make your pot of the cooking Italian with Joe family. And I'm sure you've already done it, but if not, click the link above or below. Grab yourself some bottles of Vito and Joe's extra virgin Italian olive oil, a trip to Italy right in a bottle. And guys, I always like to close my videos, I think, with my most important tip, celebrating our heritage and always, always setting traditions with you and your family to last you a lifetime. I know they did for me. Hey guys, for my kitchen New Year's, until next week, mwah, buon appetito.